Okay, so this will be purely uh, around what if analysis in Excel, which has three components, goal seek, data, se data table, and scenario manager. So let's say I have a project which has requires a initial capital investment. which I also refer to as initial cash outlay. Let's say that is 500 CR. Let's say the end of year one cash flow forecast for this particular project. That means after you invest in the project, it starts giving you benefits, right? So let's say that is 80 CR. And this cash flows uh, growth rate on an annualized basis is let's say 7%. And the useful life of the project let's say is 10 years. The cost of capital deployed for funding the project is 11%. Okay. Now, what you will do is first you will put down the years for which you are expecting this project to reap some benefits for you. And then you'll put down the cash flows. The first year cash flow is expected to be 80 CR. And then that's going to increase by 7% year on year. So previous year cash flow into one plus growth rate. This is your growth rate and these are the cash flow. Now, if you add these cash flows up, you will see it's get giving you about eleven hundred dollars, eleven hundred uh, crores. And if you compare it with the initial investment. It is 750 CR, assuming 750 CR, just increase it a little to make it more realistic. So if you just add it up, it looks bright. But if you convert this to your present values by using the correct, you can even do this. Apply this to get your present values. Apply your discounting factors on your future cash flows. Now, what does this 72 mean actually? What does this 72 mean? 70, it means that getting 80 crores of benefit after one year has the same value for me as if to get 72 crores of benefit now. Same thing, no? Because at 72, I can invest over 11% and get to 80 anyways. So what I've done is I put all these cash flows to today's terms. Similarly, this one. Getting 85 crores of cash flows after two years is the same thing as getting 69 and a half today. So what I have done, we have discounted these future cash flows to the present. Now, can we add all these cash flows? Yes, because now they are in a common time zone or a common time frame. So we'll add these cash flows. It comes to 614 crores. What is our initial investment? 
750 crores. Now does the project look beneficial to you? No. So that's the point. So if you don't convert, if you're not realistic, if you simply add your cash flows, you will wonder, oh, wow, I'm putting in 750 crores and I'm getting 1100 crores. But that's a myth. Because you're ignoring the time value of money. In reality, you're losing. Because your NPV in this case, net present value is negative, isn't it? Your net present value is negative here. It's not positive. So the first question that comes to your mind is what cash flow at end of year one will help you break even? Right? That's the first question that we'll have. That what cash flow at the end of year one will help you break even? Break even means at least zero NPV or more. So here we can actually apply the goal seek functionality of Excel. So what is my objective? My objective is my NPV should be a minimum of zero. By changing my first year forecast and press OK. Now you see you get the answer. That means if I have 97.65 crore rupees or 97.66 crore rupees in the first year, I will be able to break even. NPV will be zero. So I was short, no? So the answer is what? INR 97.66 CR using Goal seek. Okay, can I? So I set it back, let's say to 80 where we was, you know, initially. The other thing, so this is the first functionality, which is goal seek. The other one is data table. Data table helps you to scenario testing. So if I want to do a sensitivity analysis between cost of capital and NPV, first I establish the input-output relationship. So my input is this 11% and NPV is this. And this is your base case. Now, let's say I want to do a test between 4% uh, step value 0.5% stop value 18% in columns. So basically, I have to see that this I want to see that if my cost of capital increases and varies between 4% to 18%, what will be the impact on NP? So I can simply do the data table here. Data, what if analysis data table, it gives me an option whether to go for row input or column input. Now you have to ask yourself, first of all, what is your input here? Your input is cost of capital. Is it in a column or a row? It's in a column. So we choose column input cell. And then you have to click on that wherever it changes in the model, which is the cell where it changes to change the entire model. This is the cell. And just press OK. The moment you do that, all your NPVs will get created here, populated. Now, what do you see? Do you see a pattern here? That as my cost of capital is increasing, my NPV starts falling down. You know? So if you construct a graph, actually, you will see it even better.
so many options you can choose. This is okay, right? So what it tells you, if you extend the graph a little, either ways, it gives you a clear picture. What does it tell you? That my, as my cost of capital is increasing, my NPVs are fall, falling down. So here is a twist hai. between 6.5% and 7%. There is a twist. What is the twist? NPV touches zero in between these points. That point is called as IRR, internal rate of return. So if I want to capture my IRR for this cash flow scheme, I just put this here. This is minus 750, right? And is equal to IRR, these values here. What is what are you getting as the IRR value? 6.94%. And you can see that it is between 6.5 and 7. Can you see that? 6.5 pay wo positive hai, 7 pay wo negative. Hota hai. So that means between 6.5 and 7, you will achieve your break even. I mean, you, the rate will break even where your NPV will become equal to. Zero, that's your internal rate of return. So what the threshold is? When you are negotiating the cost of capital with your bankers, you have to ensure that the cost of capital is below 6.94%. Only then the project will add value to you. In this case, the negotiated cost of capital was 11%, which was far higher than the IRR. And that's why you are on the negative zone. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this is what is IRR. Now, there is another way. Uh, uh, another thing that I wanted to tell you, we did goal seek, we did data table. There is a uh, scenario managers also you can create. So let's say I create two scenarios, uh, optimistic and pessimistic scenario. So if I take the optimistic scenario and I test two variables, one is my cash flow forecast at the end of year one. The second is my annual growth rate. And I press OK. And I see uh, this is 20% higher, 96. And Growth rate is 10%, highest. And I add another scenario, I call it as pessimistic. I press OK. This 20% uh, lower this time, 64. And this one, Let's say 4%. I press OK and then I press summary. In the summary, I just need my decision or my NPV and I press OK. The moment you do that, your scenario summary will come up. So this thing here that you see, The first one, this is your base case. This is where we are currently. Remember, negative NPV of 135.6 here. Now, what it's trying to tell you is that if my optimistic scenario works out, I have 96 cash flow in the first year and 10% annual growth. 
my NPV can jump to positive 81 approximately. But if my worst case scenario comes to where I have a 20% drop in my uh, first year cash flow and growth rate drops to 4%, you will be even further negative in your NPV estimates. So this is how the scenario manager works. You can also, as I mentioned earlier, you can also, you know, do, you can populate your decision here. So let's say I put, if my NPV is greater than zero, then accept, else reject. So here you will see that the this box also comes through. Now, if let's say this, let's please, please pay attention. Let's say this initial cash flow was just 450 CR. So, yeah, that should change on its own. And you can even do conditional formatting here, as I have mentioned earlier. So, if you add a rule here, If this is equal to reject, then we can use the red color. And we can add another rule. If this is equal to accept, then we can probably make it green. Sorry, if this is equal to accept, then I can make this green. So suppose this would have been 400. Suppose this would have been 400. So it turns green also and accept also. And in the current case, It is reject. So this is how you use the uh, what if analysis key components to discuss data table which I mentioned before sensitivity test scenario manager which will basically help you get a range of where you could lie be between your best and your worst cases depending upon what comes to and goal seek will also tell you pointers as to how you negotiate your uh, cost of capital or uh, what is the mandate you want to give to your sales teams to get your cash flow forecast to achieve a particular desired result. So a thematic application actually helps you to understand the context as to where you can use this, what if it is. Okay, everyone. Thank you.